planting trees on fences. Seriously. Who does that? What kind of a monster are they? So today is about trees in fence lines. If you can't avoid them, how to deal with them. Now remember, we always want to make sure we set up fence lines where there aren't trees. But there are always exceptional circumstances where you end up with a tree smack bang where it shouldn't be. So, in this situation I've got a tree that's very close to the fence line and it was kicking out the bottom of the fence. So I've rammed a steel post in here, right opposite the tree. So to stop the steel post from leaning in against the tree over time and bending and creating a wharf in the fence, all I'm going to do is grab an off cut of pine post. And it looks easier than it is. But I'm just going to jam that in between the tree and the steel post. Then I'm going to drill a couple of holes in the pine post off cut and twitch that on to the steel post with a bit of wire. That won't go anywhere. Where the tree's fair kicking out a couple of feet into the fence line, there is no alternative but to build a box around it and strain off both ends of the fence to new box end assemblies. Now I will say this is actually an option if you're only running a few strands of barb or plain or even electric wire, um, you can just put a piece of treated pine up against the tree, bolt it or nail it on with gel fittings, and this will last you years. The big no-no is attaching your wire directly to the tree. Never do it. First off, the wire grows into the tree over time, giving you a beautiful hide and seek with your chainsaw later on. But the biggest problem is that the protective gal coating on the wire gets eroded by the sap from the tree. So over time, your wire will weaken and break at the point of the tree. So always separate your fence from your trees if you can't get around having a tree in your fence line. And as you can probably see here with this tree, the wire comes so far out from the post that I've actually had to tie it off around the post rather than attach it directly. That's not an indication that this is a good long-term solution. Um, it worked for a while, certainly kept the horse in, but it's not gonna work with sheep mesh. So let's take down these wires, roll them up. I've got another use for them on the vineyard down below. And then we'll get started with boxing off this tree, then running out our sheep mesh to a couple of new end assemblies that I'm gonna make out of the existing end posts. This bolter's wire winder has to be one of my favorite tools for dismantling old fences. Now, if you're gonna reuse your wire, make sure you keep the ends separate and you don't get them confused. With the old fence wound up and safely stored away, it was time to turn our attention to the problem of the tree that was really crowding the fence line, and in fact a couple of feet over. Rather than drill new post holes, buy new posts and fit a standard 3 metre top rail, I just lashed out on a 4.2 post on either side and used the existing intermediate posts that were in pretty good nick. I made a slightly longer box end assembly either side of the tree. assembly set up each side of the tree it's time to mark out a square box around at about 1200 out to give plenty of room for the roots to grow and expand over time. I've got a bit of a trick for marking out the 90 degree angle off a fence line. So to mark out my right angle I'm going to use a 3-4-5 triangle because I know that between the 3 and the 4 that corner's always got to be 90 degrees if it's a triangle. So what I've done is I've marked out three foot, seven foot, 
and 12 foot increments on the tie down strap that I use in the back of the ute. Now it's not entirely 100% accurate, but don't forget we're building a box assembly in the middle of the paddock, so one or two degrees is not gonna make any difference at all. be digging holes on this place if we didn't hit some tree roots so I'm breaking out the hand forged tools post hole digger um, this tool is just remarkably good at getting it going again chopping through those roots and just speeds up the whole process this beautiful radius sharp edge on this flat digging tool is just fantastic and if you're digging post holes definitely consider getting one so now it was time to ram in the wood shield posts for the corners of my new box around the tree. I was really careful to only use about a third of the dirt out of the hole with each round of ramming and to ram the dirt thoroughly before I added the next lot. That way I can be assured that the posts are not going to move and they'll be there for years to come. It pays to take time when you're ramming home your posts. Next step before we finish off this box is to run out our stiff stay wire along the boundary fence because we're actually going to be attaching our timbers over the top of that strained wire. So it's on with the speed dealers and let's roll out and strain up our 10 by 90 by 5 stiff stay horse mesh. When you're cutting off this mesh you'll see that the wire's been looped in the factory to hold onto it. Then you come back to a single picket wire and then you've got a free space of line wire to do your knots with. So when you're taking it off in the paddock, so you don't lose tiny little bits of wire, what I do is I just come back to the first of the picket wires and cut behind that, and that's gonna leave me a whole lot of line wire to do the knot around the post. And I'm not gonna lose all these little bits of metal. With the fence now strained up and tied off securely at each of the end posts, I could start to concentrate on framing up and boxing off the tree that's been giving me so much grief in the middle of this fence line.
Okay, so for our tree that was a couple of feet into the fence line, we've finished off our fence to an end assembly on each side, and we've built a box around the tree. Now what we're gonna do is use a bit of our off cut, and we're gonna twitch that off to the strain fence on each side. We're gonna then fix that off with a piece of timber running up and down, and then we're gonna attach the wire to our top and bottom rails, which are 900 apart, using Davos fencing clips. The stiff stay turned out to be perfect for this application. Being quite rigid, it actually lent itself very well to just being lightly strained around the framework of the box, and it came up beautifully with a few Davos fencing clips holding it in place. Now I'm just twitching these on, I'm not tying them on with an end knot because around the box is not being strained up so it's really not going to get significant amounts of force put on it. I'm also using lots of Davos fencing clips to tie the fence onto the box and I'm also finishing off the ends with a piece of timber. So it's got lots of reinforcement and I don't need to worry about my end knots here, all I have to do is twitch. This stiff stay is amazing wire and it's super useful if you've got multi-species. But gee whiz, doesn't leave much of a gap to play with. So there you go guys, whether you've got a large tree that's protruding several feet across the fence line and you have to box it off, or a smaller tree that's only impinging on your fence line just a tiny bit and you want to stop the wire from becoming corroded in contact with the tree, then these solutions might give you a little bit of a hand with your next fencing project involving trees. If you like this video and you found it helpful, don't forget, please hit the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, and you'll find plenty more content just like this on timthompson.ag. I'll see you next week.